Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we are going to look at sum 13 from list 2, and this is the Python solution. The problem states return the sum of the numbers in the array, returning 0 for an empty array, except the number 13 is very unlucky, so it does not count. The numbers that come immediately after 13 also do not count. We can look at the examples to make sense of this. We see that 1, 2, 2, 1 has no 13, so we just add them up and we get 6. 1, 1, we add them up, we get 2. 1, 2, 2, 1, 13. We ignore that 13, so we get 6. That's the sum of those. Now the situation, is that, or these test cases, I've left out one really important case, and that is where we have a 13 inside our list, not at the end. Because this question says that 13 is very unlucky, so in this case, we're going to ignore that too. So in this case here, we're going to add the 1, we're going to add the 2, we're going to add the 1, so we get 1 plus 2 plus 1, which is 4. Now, this is really just an example of a, of a modified sum problem. That is, we're going to write, if we write a standard algorithm to, to find a sum, and then modify it slightly, this will work out. And so let me show you how we're going to do this. What we're going to do essentially is, imagine their counter i is moving along. And typically we say i starts at 0, we add that, i goes to 1, add that, add that, and it just moves across just like that. In this case, what we're going to do is, we're going to check before we add it to sum. And if it's not a 13, we're going to add it. But if we do find a 13, we're going to actually, instead of adding the value or doing nothing, we're going to increment the counter once. And that means when the loop restarts, it increments it a second time, resulting in a double increment. And so if I show you this, for example, we have, we trace this, if i is 0, we say 0 is less than 6, so we're going to run the loop. And is nums at 0 not equal to 13? And that's true, so sum is 1. Then we increment i, i becomes 1. Is 1 less than 6? True, so we run the loop. Is nums at 0 not equal to 13? And that's false. And here where this, here's where the trick comes in. We increment i ourselves, so i is equal to i plus 1, which gives us 2. But then when we get to the end of the loop, i automatically increases, so we get that double increment. So now i becomes, that should be 3, pardon me. Is 3 less than 6? True, we run the loop. So nums at 3 is... Not, a, not equal to 13, and so i sum equals 1 plus 2, which gives us 3. i becomes 4. Is 4 less than 6? True, so we run the loop, and we get nums at 4 is not equal to 13, which is true, so sum is equal to 3 plus 1, which gives us 4. i becomes 5. Is 5 less than 6? True, so we run the loop. Nums at 5 is not equal to 13. It's false, because that's our last element here, which is now a 13. And we increment i by 1, so 5 becomes 6. And then when we get to the end of the loop, we increment i by 1. We get 7. Is 7 less than 6 false? And we exit the loop. So this is all we have to do. We just have to double increment. Now, this is a really interesting point. Um, I'm going to write this using a for loop, but it's not going to work. And once I do that, I'm going to explain why that is, but I'm still going to do it this way because in Java, this is kind of the best way to do this. I always recommend to use for loops with lists or arrays. They just work nicely because we know how, how long they are in advance. So let's do this. So we're going to make a variable sum set equal to zero. And then I'm going to say, put a bunch of spaces here so I can move up the page a bit. I'm going to say for i in range. And I'm going to start at zero, go to the length of, length of nums and I'm going to increment by 1 each time. Now I'm going to put an if statement. I'm going to say if nums at i is not equal to 13, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to say sum is equal to the current sum plus nums at i. Else, which essentially means it is 13, well, in this case, we're going to say i is equal to i plus 1. Because remember, we talked about this idea when we traced it, is that if we end up finding a 13, we increment i by 1, and that's going to kind of shoot us past the next element, because it's going to increment i by 1 here, and then increment again when the loop gets to the end. So we took two increments. Remember, a loop applies the change at the end of the loop block. And then all I'm going to do is I'll go outside the loop and return sum. And like I said, this isn't going to work. And this is the really big idea. There is a fundamental difference between the way a Python program and a Java program compiles and executes. 
A Java program will compile the entire program. It will read everything and execute it. So in a for loop, you can actually manipulate the, the counter. You cannot manipulate i or the counting variable in a for loop in Python. So basically, this line here, that doesn't do anything. So logically, this is perfectly fine, but we can't do that because the way it actually gets compiled, it builds i and I can't manipulate it. So what we have to do to, to apply this approach is we have to do this using a while loop. And so I'm going to copy all this code. I'm going to come down here. And all I'm going to do is change this for, I'm going to take my i, and I'm going to set i equal to 0 out here. And then I'm going to set a while loop. And a while is just like an if statement, except for if with an if statement, it only runs it once if it enters it, but a while loop will evaluate it at the end of the structure. So let me show you this. So we're going to continue as long as while i is less than nums at length. So this is just like your for loop check. And a while loop doesn't have an increment, so I have to actually do the increment myself. So how this works is we set up our sum, we set i equal to 0, and it says while i is less than nums. So if it comes in here and it sees that it's not a 13, it adds it. But if it is a 13, it increments it once and then increments it twice. Oh, and I have a tabbing issue here. So let me pause this and find it. Oh, I see it. This is my issue right there. I hit go, and there it is. So this, again, is a really straightforward problem in that it's just a modified sum. We're going to start with that algorithm to find the sum of a list, and we just have to do some sort of changing of the indexing inside. The really, really big idea here is that in Python, you can't actually change your counting variables once you're actually in your loop. So in this situation, you have to use a while loop. I hope this video helped, and remember you can find all of my solutions with comments on my Git repository attached in the comments. Have a great day.